Every knee bows, every tongue confesses, because he indeed is Lord, Lord over all. Lord, through all in him we live, we move, we have our being. Oh, I greet you. And I greet you with a little bit of a... A little bit of a voice, um, been having a slight, slight cough. Um, I feel fine, just a little bit, uh, uh, my voice is not 100%, but alas, when God gives us something to say, we speak, we respond, we do whatever it is that He has for us to do. Grab your Bibles, um, <clears throat> And bear with me. <laughs> Acts chapter 7, verse 37 says, This is that Moses, which said unto the children of Israel, A prophet shall the Lord your God raise up unto you, for your, you, unto you and your brethren, like unto me. Him shall ye hear. This is he that was in the church in the wilderness, with the angel which spake to him in the mount Sinai, and with our fathers who received the lively oracle to give unto us, to whom our fathers would not obey, but thrust him from them, and in their hearts turned back unto into Egypt. All right. Um, now keep verse 39 in mind, and let's go to Exodus chapter 20. Genesis, Exodus, Exodus chapter 20, second book in the Bible. Let's see here. All right. And verse 1 says, And God spake all these words, saying, I am the Lord thy God, which have brought you thee out of the land of Egypt, out of the house of bondage. Now, and then he goes on from that into the Ten Commandments. But those two verses, you know, where God's speaking to them right away and saying, Look, I'm the Lord thy God. I brought you out of the house, out of the land of Egypt, out of the house of bondage. Now, Egypt is a type of the world. And the world is a type of bondage. And the thing that we see in, in Acts chapter 7 was that even with, here it is, God brought them out of the house of bondage. But their fathers, to whom to whom our fathers would not obey, but thrust him from them, and in their hearts turned back again into Egypt. Now, here's something that I, I want to spend a little bit of time, you know, and God's been just speaking to me about this. Spend a little bit of time with you guys today. And understand a simple fact. There's a lot of people in this world that choose of their free will to be in the house of bondage. And even when freedom is there and freedom is on offer, they would rather be a slave. They would rather abrogate their responsibility to be the stewards of their own soul and give their God-given right, God-given power over to a man. And they would want to enslave themselves of their own free will to a system, to a hierarchy, to something, something else. And it's curious to me because I, I see this throughout the world in so many different places. It takes on different forms when you go from culture to culture and from different places. But it's still there. And, you know, when you look back and you see in the book of Exodus, and uh, in fact, let me go back to chapter 20 really quick. So here's God speaking to them, speaking to them from the mountain. And he goes into the commandments. <laughs> Um, shall I, shall I read the Ten Commandments? 
All right, I'll read the Ten Commandments. Yeah, I can feel like you guys... All right, I'm, but I wanted to get to verse 18, but I might as well read these. All right, I'm just going to start at chapter uh, chapter 20, verse 1. And God spake all these words, saying, I am the Lord thy God, which have brought thee out of the land of Egypt, out of the house of bondage. Thou shalt have no other gods before me. Thou shalt not make unto thee an, any graven image or any likeness of anything that is in heaven up, above or that is in the earth beneath or that is... In the water under the sea, <clears throat> under in the water under the earth, thou shalt not bow down thyself to them, nor serve them. For I, the Lord thy God, am a jealous God, visiting the iniquity of the fathers upon the children unto the third and fourth generations of them that hate me, and showing mercy unto thousands of them that love me and keep my commandments. Thou shalt not take the name of thy Lord thy God in vain. For the Lord will not hold guiltless that taketh his name in vain. Remember the Sabbath day to keep it holy. Six days shalt thou labor and do all thy work. But the seventh day is the Sabbath of the Lord thy God. In that, in that, <clears throat> in it thou shalt not do any work. Thou, nor thy son, nor thy daughter, thy manservant, nor thy maidservant, nor thy cattle, nor thy stranger that is within thy gates. For in six days the Lord made heaven and earth and the sea, and all that is therein, that all in them is, and all that in them is, and rest of the seventh day. Wherefore the Lord blessed the Sabbath day and hallowed it. Honor thy father and thy mother, that thy days may be long upon the land which the Lord thy God giveth thee. Thou shalt not kill, thou shalt not commit adultery, thou shalt not steal, thou shalt not bear false witness against thy neighbor, thou shalt not covet thy neighbor's house, thou shalt not covet thy neighbor's wife, nor his manservant, nor his maidservant, nor his ox, nor his ass, nor anything that is thy neighbor's. Verse 18, And all the people saw the thunderings and the lightnings and the noise of the trumpet and the mountains smoking. And when the people saw it, they removed and stood afar off. And they said unto Moses, Speak thou with us, and we will hear. But let not God speak with us, lest we die. And Moses said unto the people, Fear not, for God is come to prove you. And that his fear may be before your faces, that ye sin not. And the people stood afar off, and Moses drew near into the thick darkness where God was. And the Lord said unto Moses, Thus thou shalt say unto the children of Israel, Ye have seen that I have talked with you from heaven. Ye shall not make wit with me gods of silver, neither shall ye make unto you gods of gold. An altar of earth shalt thou shalt make unto me, and shalt sacrifice thereon thy burnt offerings, and thy peace offerings, thy sheep, and thine oxen, and all places where I record my name. I will come unto thee, and I will bless thee. And if thou wilt make an altar of stone, thou shalt not build it of hewn stones. For if thou lift up thy tool upon it, thou hast polluted it. Neither shalt thou go up by steps unto mine altar, that thy nakedness be not discovered thereon. Okay, so, um, here it is. God speaking to the children of Israel direct. Now, here's the thing. When, when they, when the children of Israel had this encounter, they could not turn around after this and pull one of those, did God really say? Because they were there. And you know, when God speaks to you like that, that he spoke. And there is no denying the truth or the instructions of God. And here's the thing. When the instructions of God are there, there is, what is the reason then that people would choose to want to turn away from the instructions of God? Well, um, John chapter 3 and verse uh, 
Let's go to verse 16. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, that whosoever believeth in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. For God sent not his son into the world to condemn the world, but that the world through him might be saved. He that believeth on him is not condemned, but he that believeth not is condemned already, because he hath not believed in the name of the only begotten son of God. And this is the condemnation, that light is come into the world, and men love darkness rather than light, because their deeds were evil. For everyone that doeth evil hateth the light, neither cometh to the light, lest his deeds should be reproved. But he that doeth truth cometh to the light, that his deeds may be made manifest, that they are wrought in God. Okay. So, there was something inside of the hearts of the people, the children of Israel, in the middle of that situation, They did not want to be in that light. They did not want the responsibility of hearing the voice of God for themselves, of knowing what God said. Because see, a lot of people want to know what God says so they can consider it, not so that they can actually do it. They want to put it up to debate. They want to put it up to um, a democratic election. And it doesn't work like that. See, we're in... if If you are a child of light... You are in the kingdom of God. And in the kingdom of God, there's a king with a dome. There's a king who has dominion. That's where you get the word kingdom, king dominion. So you've got a kingdom, and under the dominion of the king, whatever the king says, has his rule, has his stamp, has his his his, his signature on it, has every, it's, it's his thing. So if you are under the kingdom, then you subject yourself to the will of the king. So, in that process, for the children of Israel, when they were in that situation, here's the thing. The kingdom and the king, what his intention is, and his desire is, in verse 2, I am the I am the Lord thy God, which brought thee out of the land of Egypt, out of the house of bondage. I brought you out of the world. I brought you out of the house of bondage. And now I'm going to give you some instructions that if you would follow them are going to equip you and enable you to walk in a path of freedom. See, for this reason, Christ was manifest to destroy the works of the devil. Um, It is for freedom that Christ set us free. So God's desire is that you would have life and have it more abundantly. So His Will, his desire, his yoke is easy, his burden is light. He desires that we would have freedom. And there is freedom that is to be had. But because, and this is the condemnation of the world, that the light has come into the world and men love darkness rather than than the light because their deeds were evil. So, and for everyone that doeth the evil, hateth the light, neither cometh to the light, lest his deeds should be reproved. Um, But he that doeth truth cometh to the light, that his deeds may be manifest, that they are wrought in God. So, the, the, the issue is, and the issue of the soul is that unless a soul is willing to come into the light, to be bore before the throne of God and to be exposed for what they are apart from God in order to be infused and into to be made one with him in that light unless you're willing to jump in and jump through there you you're going to remain separate and in remaining separate you remain the the place that you end up going and the place where you think you can remain hidden is in the dark and you want to go back into the house of bondage if you are wanting to stay in the world. You want to go back into that house of bondage. Now, part of the way that that works, just like what they tried to do with Moses. Look, Moses, you go speak to God, and then you come back and you tell us what he said. And then we're going to listen to you, Moses. (laughs) In the end, really what they want is they want to remain under the curse. And that curse is that you need a man to get to God. They want to remain under that spot. They want to have something between them and God. Because if there's something between them and God, now there's a buffer. Now there's a shadow. Now there's something that can, can, that they now can, 
can look to and also they can blame and they can change and they can they can interchange that out so they don't like this flavor this month they'll get another one but in the end inside of the heart there's wickedness inside of the heart there's evil inside of the heart um, the deeds are evil inside of the heart there's bondage and in that bondage there's slavery and in that slavery there's destruction and there's despair and so the irony is that while people would admire that which is free and would in one level long for that which is free, they refuse to go that path which is the path of freedom. The path of freedom is Christ. You, you're not going to find freedom any other place or any other way. So that is the path of freedom. That is the path of success. That is, obedience is the path of liberty, you know, when you follow the voice of the leading of the Holy Spirit, you are on the path that will lead to life. That is life. Even right now, in this moment, you, if you line yourself up with the truth, and if you obey the truth, you are in life now. You submit yourself to the Lordship of Jesus Christ, you cross over from darkness to light, from the power of Satan unto God, and nothing can rip you out of his hand. You may go through some struggles, of course you're going to, but in the process, you're going to obtain um, that life that you long for, you're going to obtain that peace that you desire in the core of your being, and God is going to be with you, and you're going to hear his voice. You've got to hear his voice for yourself. See, when Jesus rent the veil of the temple in two, and there was now no separation between God and man. Because through his body and through the blood of Jesus that was shed on the cross for us, as a result of that, there is no separation. Now, if you choose to have separation, you're choosing to go back under a curse. You're choosing to put separation between you and God. And in that choice, everything outside of Christ Jesus is flawed. Everything outside of him is flawed. See, this is why we here, we push very hard to, to, to dissuade you from following us. Because you don't need a man, you need Christ. And because we don't also, we've, made a, we've gone out of our way to make sure that we don't have a vested interest in the outcome. So we want just for this message to help and support in the journey that God has you on. But listen, if you don't, if you can just carry on, if this is not what God has for you, and if it is, praise God. But let it just be a support and an encouragement to you in your journey. But you need to know God for yourself, and the path of freedom, because God brought you out of bondage so that you could walk. Not just with him, but that it would be a consummation and that it would be you and him and him and you and you would walk and his life would be flowing through you and he, you would be an ambassador of him and he would be looking through your eyes in the earth as you travel to and fro doing the will of the Father where there's no separation. See, the world and the, the, the world and the church has sought to pollute the truth and lie to you and tell you that God is over there and you're over here and now all you need to do is all these efforts of, uh, of you know do this and don't do that and be a good little boy or a good little girl and if you don't do this and we'll let you know you're not doing things right so we can control you um, but then <clears throat> in that whole process it's always to reinforce the separation because bondage is possible when there's separation. Bondage is possible when you have been deceived. See, the enemy, if, if you know who you are, if you walk in a remembrance of the truth and who you are in Christ Jesus, the enemy cannot ensnare you because now you're moving in the truth of your identity. If you know the power of the name of Jesus and you call on that name that is above every other name, there is no power in hell that can stand up against that name. There is no power in hell that can remove you from the hand of God. Neither angel nor demon, no power nor principality, nothing can remove you from the hand of God. Now you can of your free will choose to distance yourself and walk away, but nothing external can remove you 
from him when you have been consummated to him. You can choose to remove yourself and put yourself in harm's way, but that which is in the world cannot do anything like that because greater is he that's in us than he that's in the world. So the greater power is in us. The greater power is that which we move in and have our being in. Now, why is it, though, that so many will choose bondage? Well, part of it is the condemnation of the world, is that lights come into the world and men choose bondage because their deeds are evil. They choose slavery because they don't want to be in the light. They don't want to be exposed. But listen, that is that, that exposure is necessary, and it's temporary, and it's painful, yes. But there's freedom on the other side of it. It's just like... It's like putting antiseptic on a wound. <clears throat> it's going to hurt for that moment. But you're cleaning out all the junk. And in the process of being exposed and in the process of, of just that whole thing being revealed for what it is and the pain of that, but in the process of that, you come to the other side of it and you're free. Because now it's a relief. My gosh, it is a relief when there's nothing there. There's nothing to be to be hidden. There's you just completely built, laid bare before the Father, and there's nothing. There's He knows you, and He receives you unto Himself. And the life that you now live is what's the life that He's given you. And the direction now you have is the direction that He would lead you. The things that you do are now the works of the Father. Like Jesus, as as He's He's the the Good Shepherd, and He's the one that's also um, the example in the earth of the ultimate life that's ever been lived. And He shows us. He says, "I only speak the words I get from the Father. I only do the things I see the Father doing." And Jesus also said that ye, greater works are you going to do than the ones that you've even seen Me do. And we're doing them, even right now. This, just this, this broadcast right here. I mean, people are listening to this simultaneously and sometimes even over extended periods of time all over the world. This is something that's possible right now in the time that we're in. That's an amazing, incredible thing. Back in Jesus' day when he walked the earth, um, you know, if you wanted to hear the word of God, you had to... You had to follow, and you had to go with him wherever he was going. And now the, this, the, the capabilities, the possibilities are there for even different things, greater things, amazing things. So, you know, we're living in that time. Now, it's not us that does it. It's him that does the work through us. But even as he, that, that rock that grows and fills the whole earth and the continued manifestations of his power through us, he does the work through us. So, of course, he's going to do greater and more and more and more incredible things. So don't get stuck on the things that are before because God can do things that are beyond any kind of expectation you may have ever had now, today. So this is an incredible time. Now, realize there's going to be many people around you that are going to choose bondage. And at the same time they choose bondage, they are going to envy the freedom if you walk in that freedom in Christ Jesus. But to but that envy of the freedom that's in you, it's going to be a couple of responses if they're not seeking to go on the way of truth. Either they're going to want to destroy that freedom and that light that's in you, or they're going to try to entice you into their system and bring you in through either you know oppression or through seduction or whatever it may be, but in order to co-opt and pollute that light which is in you. But know that that's a typical response. Know that that's uh, uh, par for the course. And so if you just know that, then you can adjust. There's going to be a lot of people that don't want to be free. A lot of people don't want freedom. Which is ironic because, you know, for us, for the follower of Christ, that's what you want in your heart. You want to walk in that freedom. You want to know the voice of God. You want the fullness of the plan and purpose of God manifest in you throughout the window that you're here in the earth. That's your desire. And that's God-given. But sometimes we mistakenly make the assumption that there's others that want that same thing. And the bulk of the people in the world don't want that. So, knowing that, 
you now understand a little bit more of why in the book of Revelation, towards the close, where some of the final instruction says in chapter 22 and verse, um, verse 11... Well, okay, let me just go to verse 10. It says, And he saith unto me, Seal not the sayings of this of the book, of the, uh, see, the sayings of the prophecy of this book, for the time is at hand. He that is unjust, let him be unjust still. And he which is filthy, let him be filthy still. And he that is righteous, let him be righteous still. And he that is holy, let him be holy still. And behold, I come quickly, and my reward is with me, to give Every man, according to his work, shall be. I am Alpha and Omega, the beginning and the end, the first and the last. Amen. And verse 20, <laughs> Surely I come quickly. Amen. Even so, come, Lord Jesus, to the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ be with you all. Amen. Yeah, you know what? There comes a point where... The, the opportunity has passed. The chance to turn has passed. The option to get right with God has passed. And, you know, we proclaim the truth and we make that known. But at the same time, when people choose, they're also making choice for their own eternity and their own life. And even if you choose to abrogate your responsibility and you want to give that to somebody else, that's still in and of itself a choice. Now, the path of freedom is to make your life completely, 100%, given over to the living God. And you withhold nothing from any place. And every area of your life is laid bare before Him, as painful as it may be. And you allow him to flood into all those places and all those spots. And and you you allow for the complete and total consummation of you with the Father. And there's no separation. And from that place, every moment that you live in I am right now, from this, from this window forward, is all about him. And the things that you would do is how he directs you, how he leads you, how he guides you while you're here in the earth. That is the place of freedom. But realizing that most people will not choose that. Well, you make the truth known. You do what you can, where you can, when you can. But still in that process, there comes a point where you just have to let people be what they are. And, <clears throat> you know, we make truth known. And we speak and we support and wherever God quickens us, that's where we go. But you know, one of the ways to pray, if you have a burden for um, people even in this time, is ask God to lead you to the ones that He is calling and turning and the ones that He is drawing onto Himself. Ask Him to show you who they are and to direct the conversation and to flow through you and, and use you for however He intends. But that's the way. You want to be in line with the Spirit. Not The goal is not to be some great preacher, or goal, great evangelist, or great teacher, or great whatever. That's not the goal. The goal is to be... So the success is in the obedience. We've talked about this many times. So you want for the Spirit of God to lead and guide you to whom the Father is quickening already. You know, I remember uh, um, Jackie Pollinger, who's been a friend of the family, a wonderful lady, uh, who started uh, work in Hong Kong. And one thing she talked about when she first went there as a missionary, and, you know, she was just... Um, Praying for God to use her, and and uh, you know just not much happening, you know, in her initial time, and then she started changing how she prayed because the Spirit of God quickened her, and she started just praying and asking God to lead her to the people that He was drawing onto Himself, and to so that and and that's what started happening is she was as she was going to and fro the people that she started encountering were the ones that God was drawing and people just started awakening to who Christ Jesus was left, right and center all over the place. And they had a huge, um, just manifestation of people that were walking with Christ in that place where she was. 
So the prayer is, <clears throat> I mean, one of our prayers even is, we pray that this message would reach the ones who God would have for it to reach. That every person that hears this is the person that, by God's design, is the ones that God wants to hear this, and no one else. This doesn't. This doesn't need to reach um, people that this is not intended for. This needs to just reach the ones that God would have this reach. You want to be in step and in line with what God is doing, not carrying out what you think is your own agenda or your own plan or your own purpose in your time in the earth. No, you don't want that. Because anything apart from Christ is not going to last. Everything done in Christ has eternal value, eternal merit, <clears throat> eternal significance. And everything done apart from Him, all your good works are like filthy rags in God's sight. Anything that's done apart from Him has no value, no merit, no um, significance whatsoever. So you want to be in step with Him. But in being in step with Him, that is the path of freedom, and that is the path out of this world and world system that is the part of life and liberty, <laughs> the pursuit of happiness, all this great, the joy unspeakable is on that path for the chi- for the child of God. And in the time that we're now in, as we flow with the Spirit of God, you want to adjust as you are flowing with that wave of light that continues to build and to grow and to fill and to flood and to go all the way around us. God bless you guys as you're on this journey. Adjust, trust, and flow with what God is doing. And it is between you and the Father, and there's no separation. And He will speak within and resound in your own soul. And out of that place and that still small voice that resonates and, and even fills your whole being, walk in that and obey and trust because there's life in that. God bless you guys. We love you. Drop us an email, faithmix at gmail.com. Say hi. All right, we'll talk to you sometime soon. God bless you. Bye.